I focused on nonviolent crime. As an example, a woman who you know very well was in jail. She had 24 more years to serve. She served for 22 years. She had 20 Alice Johnson. Alice. She was in the Super Bowl. High quality. Oh, yeah. I said, how many years? And she was on a telephone call, and they were involved in selling marijuana, mostly marijuana. And she got, like, 50 years in jail. But she'd be killed under your plan. Huh? As a drug dealer. No, no, no. Under my... Oh, under that? Uh, it would depend on the severity. It but would here, depend on the severity. Ad, uh, she's technically a former drug dealer. She, the, she had multi-million dollar cocaine ring. Any said, drug dealer... Look. So even it, Alice Johnson in that ad? It, she can't do it, okay? By the way, if that was there... No, she wouldn't be killed. It would start as of... Now, so you wouldn't go to the no, past. I know, but your policy. No, 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 right. no, starting now, yeah. But she wouldn't have done it if it was death penalty. In other words, if it was death penalty, she wouldn't have been on that phone call. She wouldn't have been a dealer. Now, she wasn't much of a dealer because she was sort of like, I mean, honestly, she got treated terribly. She was treated, she was treated sort of like I get treated. But, Brett, she was treated very unfairly. But she got 48 years, and that was bad. Now, today, if I did what I say that you have to do, and again, I'm not sure the country is ready for it. You know, China was hugely, uh, 150 years ago, China was taken over by much lesser countries because they were all drugged out on the opium and all the I problems. Mean, it's a communist regime. regime. They, well, they dropped they, the hammer. They were all drugged out, and they were totally, they were a disaster. They were taken over by other smaller countries, large sections of China. And then things happened, and they had strong leadership, and they put in the death penalty, and they've become, they've been able to build. Okay, so let me get this straight. Trump took criticism for passing the First Step Act, so now he's tacking right on Fox News to pander to the base, but he still has an undying need to defend himself, so he invokes Alice Johnson, who is the face of his First Step Act, and was sentenced to prison for decades for a low-level offense, only for Brett Baer to point out on air that under Trump's new plan, she would be sentenced to death. I swear to God, whoever allowed Trump to sit for this interview either hates him or is just as dumb as Trump is. And this also goes to show the extent to which Trump isn't interested in policy. He's not doing this because he has principles. He's doing it because he wants power. He will advocate for legislation depending on which way the wind blows. One day he wants grace and mercy for low-level drug offenders. The next day he is sentencing them to death. None of this matters to him, it's just whatever he can do to help himself politically. Which is why, by the way, he has almost no legislation to tout from his own presidency. The guy passed the First Step Act, which he's literally running away from in this very clip, and he passed a tax cut for millionaires and billionaires. The rest of his presidency was spent attacking Muslims and immigrants and poor people, pretending a global pandemic didn't exist, watching the economy crater, losing millions of jobs, and ultimately inciting an insurrection on the U.S. Capitol. Not exactly the most successful presidency as far as legislation goes. In fact, it was the least successful presidency by just about every metric in modern American history. All of which is to say, if you're looking for some defensive policy by Donald Trump, you're probably not going to get it. And this wasn't the only disastrous moment from this interview with Donald Trump. Here are a few moments from this sit down with Brett Baer that proved less than helpful for the guy. This is when Trump was confronted with the alleged crime in the classified documents case that he committed, and he decides to cop to it on air. We they were did talking. ask for it. No. And they said, I gave can you give some, the documents back? And we were talking. And then they said they went to DOJ to subpoena you to get them Which back. they've never done before. Right. And, and but why not just hand them over then? Because I had boxes. I want to go through the boxes and get all my personal things out. I don't want to hand that over to Nara yet. And I was very busy, as you've sort of seen. Yeah, but I've according very, to the indictment, busy. you then tell this aide to move to other locations after telling your lawyers to say you'd fully complied with the subpoena when you hadn't. But before I send boxes over, I have to take all of my things out. These boxes were interspersed with all sorts of things. Uh, golf shirts, clothing, pants, shoes. There were many things. Uh, I would say Warplan. much, much more. Not that I know of, but not that I know of. But everything was declassified. And Biden didn't have the right to do that because he wasn't president. Nor did Mike Pence, by the way, have the right to do that because he wasn't president. Right. And then here's a moment where Brett Baer holds Trump's feet to the fire over his hiring of the, quote, best people, only to inevitably watch all of those people turn their backs on him. In 2016, you said that. I'm going to surround myself with only the best and most serious people. 
Well, I did do that. This and we time, had tremendous look. We had the best economy we've ever had. The this world time, has ever seen. Your Vice President Mike Pence is running against you. Yeah. Your Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she's running against you. Your former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned National Security Advisor John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr. Uh, says you shouldn't be President again. Uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. You recently called and uh, Barr a, a gutless pig. Uh, your second defense secretary is not supporting you, called you irresponsible. This week, you and your White House called your White House Chief of Staff John Kelly weak and ineffective and born with a very small brain. You called your acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney a born loser. You called your first Secretary of State Rex Tillerson dumb as a rock. And your first Defense Secretary James Mattis the world's most overrated general. You called your White House Press Secretary Kay the Canadian milk toast. And multiple times you've referred to your Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao as Mitch McConnell's China loving wife. So, why did you hire all of them in the first place? Because I hired 10 to 1 that were fantastic. We had a great economy. We had phenomenal people in charge of the economy. We had phenomenal people in the military. I'm not a fan of Milley, and I'm not a fan of certain of the television people. But I knocked out ISIS. I defeated ISIS. They said, Mattis, it would take three years, and I don't think we can do it. I did it in a period of, like, four weeks. There's a lot of people who praise you for your policies. I just said true. that. That's true. Well, I mean, you just went through a list. But don't forget, for every one you say, I had 10 that love us. So yeah, all in all, not a great interview if you're Donald Trump and your goal is to not get humiliated on national television. And by the way, this right here shows the danger of a hermetically sealed right-wing media ecosystem. The fact that Trump has only ever sat down for fawning interviews with little errand boys like Lou Dobbs and Sean Spicer and Maria Bartiromo all these years has put him in a position where A, he can't handle even the mildest of pushback or scrutiny without completely dissembling, and B, he has completely lost touch with where regular people are at. Because while Fox News and OAN and Newsmax might love talking about Hunter Biden and his super secret laptop and Joe Biden's play to pay scheme and the 1023 forums with the FBI, most people have no fucking clue what any of that stuff means. And if you're no longer able to discern issues that matter to regular people with the nonsense that you read in some right wing rabbit hole, then you have effectively lost your ability to reach voters. And not for nothing, but Donald Trump is in for a world of pain this next election if the only issues he's willing to litigate are the stuff of right wing fever dreams. But with that said, if that's what he wants to do, then who am I to stop him? Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.